Hi everybody, I'm Liz, this is French Toast and Books, and today we are going to talk about my anticipated releases for the months of January and February. I know January is basically over because um, I got sick, so that's why there was no videos for three weeks. Right, let's get right into it. I am going to start with February though because that is the month we're leading into, and then I'm going to backtrack and do January. So, we have 14 books that I'm excited to probably not read, but to hear more about for February, and then seven for January. So let's get straight up into the February books. These are release dates pending Goodreads, so they may or may not be correct, but I'll leave all the books with links in the description so you can check it out, pre-order it if it sounds fascinating or interesting, or just learn more information down below. We have five books set to release on February 1st, with the first one being A Lullaby for Witches by Hester Fox. The main premise of this book is it takes place in two time eras. One is New England, Massachusetts, and then 150 years later in current Tynemouth, Massachusetts. And essentially it follows two women, one set in like the witchy, um, sounds like kind of the, a dark magic just keeps getting darker and darker and then there is the present day where it's a lady who stumbles into this museum with a high class New England Massachusetts uh, family and then she kind of dives into the family's history and uncovers this dark witchery and awakens a dark presence in doing so. This is a new to me author but Hester Fox is known for writing gothic um, and dark not necessarily happy ending stories and so I'm very interested to uh, dive in to this work of hers. Next we have This Woven Kingdom by Tahara Mafi. I know that I have not really uh, read most of Tahara Mafi's works. I attempted shatter me and though I enjoyed it I had a lot of issues with how it was pitched to me versus my experience of reading it so I never actually continued on with the shadow me series but all of Tahara Mafi's other works have really interested me and I just have not been able to pick up anything else but I'm still really excited to hear more about her new book This Woven Kingdom. This is a new fantasy trilogy for Tahara Mafi and it takes place the main character is a disposable servant. Essentially the main character it kind of catches the attention of the crown prince. There's also a prophecy for telling the death of the king and potentially our main character is the cause of uprooting the kingdom and all sorts of other stuff. Next up is Fire Becomes Her by Rosie Thor and I know I've heard of her debut book, Tarnished Are the Stars. I have not read it, but uh, I know this, she's a queer author and I'm pretty excited to experience her works if I end up doing so. Our main character, Ingrid Ellis, basically wants to push herself into the elite society and she strikes a deal with a senator who's trying to run for president in order to spy for him and it sounds a little politically intrigue type story. Um, obviously, like I said, there's magic and stuff, so it sounds kind of interesting and I'm excited to learn more. Next, we have The Violence by Delilah S. Dawson. Now, I read Delilah S. Dawson's like debut book, possibly, um, or one of her, at least her first stories back when I was very, very new to booktube called Hit. I love that book, though I did not care for its sequel as much. Um, but I'm excited to kind of dive back into her works, so let's see what the violence is all about. This one has a mysterious plague plotline, and it takes place with three generations of women navigating this chilling new reality in a moving exploration of identity, cycles of abuse, and hope. So it takes place with Chelsea Martin, a perfect housewife married her high school sweetheart, mother of two daughters. But little do we know, Chelsea's husband has turned their house into a prison. He's very physically abusing her for years, and she's n ooh. and she has nowhere to turn. She even has a narcissistic mother, so that's where the three generations come in. 
And uh, Chelsea does not want her daughters to be subjected to this isolation and abuse, especially uh, with this mysterious illness sweeping the nation. And this is a like a zombie-esque illness because the infected experience sudden explosive bouts of animalistic rage and attack anyone in their path. And somebody who has just finished um, a marathon play of The Last of Us part one and two um, over the course of December and January. Um, I'm very excited for this. And the last book for February 1st is Castles in Their Bones by Laura Sebastian. Laura Sebastian is the author of Ash Princess. So this is the first book in a fantasy trilogy with a spellbinding story of three princesses and the destiny they were born for, Seduction, Conquest, and The Crown. Three princesses turn 16 and so they're now of age to leave their homeland and go marry princesses that they're betrothed to. And these three princesses have been trained since birth in the arts of deception, seduction, and violence with a singular goal which is to bring down mon monarchies and their marriages are merely the first stage of their mother's grand vision to reign over the entire continent of Vesteria. Dun dun dun! Alright, next up we have books that are set to release. I have February 8th, which is You Truly Assumed by Layla Sabrine. This is a debut novel and it takes place after a terrorist attack rocks the country. I'm assuming this is probably just right after the uh, September 11th, uh, 2001. And it takes place with three black Muslim girls creating a space where they can shatter assumptions and share truths uh, post the terrorist attack where the country is thrown into anti-Islamic sentiments. Next we have one that is set to publish on February 15th called We Were Kings by Courtney C. Stevens. This book is um, a bit of a mystery um, and also post-crime novel. Essentially 20 years ago 18 year old Frances Quick was convicted of murdering her best friend Cora King and sentenced to death. Due to the Accelerated Death Penalty Act, Frances now has only 30 days to prove her innocence in the current present day and it's kind of this mad dash to prove her innocence and also um, obviously find who actually killed Cora. Our next book is set to be released on February 17th called Parallel Hells by Leon Craig. So this is Leon Craig's debut novel. It's a collection um, of stories that draws on folklore and gothic horror to explore queer identity, love, power, and the complicated nature of being human. There's 13 darkly audacious stories where we meet a golem made of clay, learning that its powers far exceed its creator's expectations, a ruined mansion which grants the secret wishes of a group of revelers, and a notorious murderer who discovers her Viking husband is not what he seems. So there's lots of stories in there and they sound very interesting, exploring life and hell and damnation and all sorts of stuff with uh, queer elements and it sounds pretty good. So my last six books all are set to release February 22nd. It sounds like a really big release day for uh, some books that sound. First we have This Might Hurt by Stephanie Warbell. Stephanie Warbell is the author of Darling Rose Gold, which was a book I was highly anticipated to read. I never bought it or read it, obviously, but I did follow up on its um, inspirational material, which was Gypsy Rose's story. This book takes place with two sisters, one trapped in the clutches of a cult and the other in a web of her own lives. So the two sisters' names, we have Natalie Collins and Kit. Kit's the one who um, whisks herself over to the cult. It's an island called Wisewood and they essentially are uh, off the grid, no contact for nothing in order to essentially achieve true fearlessness. Um, but as six months pass, Natalie gets an email, kind of throws her into the culty like things going on with Wisewood and 
it's it sounds like a mess and it sounds interesting. Next up we have Extasia by Claire Legrand. Claire Legrand wrote Fury Born, which is not a book I have read yet. It's kind of everywhere on the book circles. I do own it, so I hope to get to it eventually. She also wrote Saw Kill Girls and a whole slew of other books that are book circle favorites. So let's dive into what her next book, Extasia, is all about. It's a YA horror novel with LGBTQ plus elements about a girl who joins a coven to root out a vicious evil that's stalking her village. Perfect for fans of The Handmaid's Tale and The Grace Year. I love The Handmaid's Tale. I have not read The Grace Year. So it starts off with saying her name is unimportant. All you must know is that today she will become one of the four saints of Haven. The elders will mark her and place the red hood on her head with her sisters, she will stand against the evil power that lives beneath the Black Mountain, an evil which has already killed nine of her village's men. She will tell no one of the white-eyed beasts that follow her, or the faceless gray women tall as houses, or the girls she saw kissing in the elm grove. Today she will be a saint of Haven. She will rid her family of her mother's shame to last and save her people from destruction. She is not afraid, are you? Next up we have Tripping Arcadia by Kit Maquist. This is a debut novel. This is a atmospheric modern gothic with all the splendor of the great Gatsby and all the secrets, lies, and darkness that opulence can hide. Our main character is a med school dropout desperate to find a job so she accepts the job of a um, an assistant to a family doctor. The doctor's in charge of Jonathan, a sickly, poetic, drunk heir to this family empire. So we'll see what happens there. Next we have Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Heron Blake. I absolutely loved Girls Made of Stars by Ashley Heron Blake. She does really sad but also really typically gay or sometimes tragic stories um, and I'm so excited to read more of her stories. I just haven't been able to yet. So obviously what she writes is on my radar. This is a clever and steamy queer romantic comedy about taking chances and accepting love with all of its complications. So our main character Delilah Green swore she would never go back to her hometown called Bright Falls. She is a New York photography, her career has really taken off, gained steam, her bed's never empty, uh, she's with a different woman every night, and that's just fine by her. However, her estranged stepsister Astrid pressures her into photographing their wedding with a huge guilt trip and a five-figure check, so Delilah whisks herself back to her hometown. So while she whisks herself to her childhood town, deals with all the wedding buzz and craze. She also stumbles into her old friend, like childhood bestie that they absolutely like loathe each other now. And they're rediscovering each other and the adult life and whether you're going to be mean girl friend, friends or not. Next we have Only a Monster by Vanessa Lynn. This is Vanessa Lynn's debut novel, a sweeping romance, um, Perfect for people who were who liked Passenger and um, dark fantasy like The Savage Song. I did enjoy The Savage Song back when I read it a few years ago. So Only a Monster ha says it should have been the perfect summer sent to stay with her late mother's eccentric family in London. 16 year old Joan is determined to enjoy herself. She loves her nerdy job at the historic Holland house and when her super cute co-worker Nick asks her on a date, it feels like everything is falling into place. But she soon learns the truth. Her family aren't just eccentric, they're monsters uh, with terrifying hidden powers and Nick isn't just a cute boy, he's a legendary monster slayer. Ugh. well. What a shock. The last book in February is The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. And this cover 
is stunning, by the way. Axie O definitely has a story I have heard of, um, XOXO. Not read it. I don't think I ever plan to, but let's dive into her new story, The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea. It says, Deadly storms have ravaged Mina's homeland for generations. Floods sweep away entire villages while bloody wars are waged over the few remaining resources. Her people believe the sea god, once their protector, now curses them with death and despair. In an attempt to appease him, each year a beautiful maiden is thrown into the sea to serve as the sea god's bride, in the hopes that one day the true bride will be chosen and end the suffering. Um, on the night of the sacrifice, the sacrificial woman is Shim Chung, and Shim Chong is Mina's older brother, June's betrothed. And so in order to save her brother from heartache, Mina decides to take Shim's place and she throws herself into the sea. So she's swept away into the spirit realm and is trying to <laughs> seek out the sea god and stop the storms and everything happening once and for all. Now let's get into the January stories y'all. First up is The Kindred by Alicia Dow. In this sci-fi world in order to save the a galactic kingdom from revolution kindred mind pairings were created to ensure each and every person were seen and heard. We have two kindred mind pairings. We have Joy Abara, a commoner, and Duke Felix Hamdi, nobility's most infamous Playboy. Now the royal family is assassinated which puts Felix next in line for the throne and accused of the murders. So people will stop at nothing to, until he's dead. So there is a target on Felix and also Joy's back. So they all uh, run, flee, go off to hiding and explore the kindred bond and all sorts of other stuff to try to resave their their galaxy. Next we have the Ivory Key by Akshaya Rahman. It's an Indian-inspired duology where magic is a prized resource, the only thing between peace and war. When magic runs out, four estranged royal siblings must find a new source before their country is swallowed by invading forces. The next book is Real Easy by Marie Rutkowski. Real Easy takes place in 1999 and Samantha has danced for years at the Lovely Lady Strip Club. She's not used to mixing work and friendship, after all, between her jealous boyfriend and his young daughter. She has enough on her plate, but the newest dancer is so clueless that Samantha feels compelled to help her learn the hustle and drama of the club. How to sweet talk the boss, fit in with the other women, and make good money. One night when the new girl needs a ride home, Samantha agrees to drive a simple decision that turns deadly. Georgia, another dancer drawn into the ensuing murder and missing person investigation, gathers information for Holly, a grieving detective, determined to solve the case. Georgia just wants to help, but her involvement makes her a target. As Holly and Georgia round up their suspects, the story's point of view shifts between dancers, detectives, children, club patrons, and the killer. Drawing on her experience as a former dancer, Marie Rutkowski emerges us in the captivating world of the club, which comes alive with complicated people trying their best to protect themselves and those they love. So I'm very interested by this, primarily for the fact that it, Marie Rutkowski is a former club dancer. Next is Light Years from Home by Mike Chen. Uh, a lot of Mike Chen stories have recently come on my radar um, and they sound very fascinating. Light Years From Home um, starts off with every family has issues, most can't blame them on extraterrestrials. Evie Shao and her sister Cass aren't on speaking terms. 15 years ago on a family camping trip, their father and brother vanished. Their dad turned up days later dehydrated and confused and convinced he'd been abducted by aliens. Their brother, Jacob, remained missing. The women dealt with it very differently. Cass, suspecting her college dropout twin, simply ran off, became the rock of the family. Evie traded academics to pursue alien conspiracy theories, always looking for Jacob. When Evie's UFO network uncovers a new event, she goes to investigate and discovers Jacob is back. He's different, older, stranger, and talking of intergalactic war. But the tensions between the siblings haven't changed at all. If the family is going to come together to help Jacob, 
then Cass and Evie are going to have to fix their issues and fast because the FBI are after Jacob and if their brother is telling the truth, possibly an entire space armada too. Next we have The Red Palace by June Her. Uh, this takes place in Joseon, Korea in 1785. There are few options available to illegitimate daughters in the capital city, but through hard work and study, 18-year-old Haiyan has earned a position as a palace nurse. All she wants is to keep her head down, do a good job, and perhaps finally win her estranged father's approval. But Haiyan is suddenly thrust into the dark and dangerous world of court politics when someone murders four, four women in a single night, and the prime suspect is Haiyan's closest friend and mentor, determined to prove her beloved teacher's innocence. Haiyan launches her own secret investigation. Dun, dun, dun. I apologize if I butchered any of that. And the last book I have for January is Goliath by Tochi Onibuchi. I have not read any of Tochi Onibuchi's other works. I have heard about them, particularly Riot Baby, War Girls, etc. She has written quite a lot of stories and I just need to dive right in. Goliath is set in 2050 where Earth has begun to empty. Those with the means and the privilege have departed the great cities of the United States for a more comfortable confines of space colonies. Those left behind salvage what they can from the collapsing infrastructure. As they eke out in existence, their neighborhoods are being cannibalized brick by brick. Their houses are sent to the colonies that was once a home and now a quaint reminder for the colonists of the world that they wrecked. So there we have a fantastic set of stories, 14 in February, 7 in January for a whopping total of 21 fantastically interesting stories. Please let me know in the comments down below if you've heard of any of these stories, if you've read any of them, what you've thought about them, and if I haven't mentioned a story that you are super excited for, whether it was already released in January or is upcoming to be released in February, please let me know. Let me hear about these exciting books that you are excited for. Books are so interesting and we have so many amazing ones coming out this year. I have roughly a hundred on my radar and I'm sure once, you know, we get to the second half of the year with more people releasing what books are coming out for them that that's just gonna rack up higher and higher and higher it's it's crazy y'all this year is gonna be awesome so thank you guys so much for watching and until next time bye i need to charge my phone Did I finish? I finished. Ha 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 ha